Okay, so I'm gonna mix some brown into this uh, to this bleach bone or blanco hueso, <laughs> blanco hueso, <laughs> and we're gonna try and make soba, the color of soba noodles. And maybe I should look up some reference so I'm not just flying blind here and being a dum dum. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at some reference for soba noodles. We're just gonna do a bit of this for now, and I'll try and finish off the rest another time. Uh, soba noodles. Soba. Uh oh, they're they're kind of browner than I thought. I thought they were like a like a grayish brown, but I guess that's when they're dry. When they're when they're in sauce and everything, they kind of have a yellowish brownish look. Let's see, this is probably a little too. Well, let's start with this, and see where that takes us. Mika, the one time it's sunny in the UK, I'm down at the fish market buying groceries. That still sounds pretty fun, though. Buying some nice groceries, some nice fresh fish. What kind of fish are you buying? I think what we'll do is kind of run a wash, like a dark wash around this. And this It's a little hard to... I'm sure you guys can't see it, but there's they've got one of those swirly fish cake things. You know, guys know what I'm talking about? The swirly fish cakes. It's sculpted onto here. And then there is what appears to be a uh, one single flat piece of seaweed. I think that's what that is. The white and pink things? Yeah, with the swirl. Yeah, it's it's got that. So we have to paint that separately. It's so small, so I gotta kind of got to be on my A game for painting that thing, I guess. <laughs> and what I'm thinking about doing is filling this entire thing up with some uh with some clear clear coat to look like soup. Maybe I'll add a little tint of of yellow. This is probably too dark, so we'll have to kind of lighten it up. Maybe do a dry brush? I don't know. Mika bought Salmon Haddock, but I'd rather been at home priming my models the one day it's sunny. Oh, I get you, I get you, I get you. You know, today it's shitty over here in uh, Ontario. The weather, it's probably more like what you're used to, uh, Mika. <laughs> it's kind of just kind of drizzly and and gloomy as uh as Mary Trunks put it. It's a little gloomy today. Yesterday was half decent though. I ended up doing some spray painting and some top coating. Which is good. I haven't uh, done that really seriously yet. Put the top coat on my exo frame. This song is still the Katamari soundtrack, but it has a bit of like a weird Disney-ish kind of sound to it. I might change it. But I'm also kind of lazy, so maybe we'll just stick with it. <laughs> See, I glued these uh, these bowls onto just a fruit, fruit cup thing. It's just easier to handle, but um, like if I were to just hold this, it would be super annoying. But I do have that Citadel painting handle that I showed off a little earlier. Do you have one of those, uh, Mika, by the way? Like, how do you handle your models? Do you just hold them by the base while you paint them, or do you have one of... Mm, where is it? <laughs> I can't find it right now, but yeah, do you have one of those like Citadel painting handles? 
I just bought one. I think it's going to be very useful. <laughs> Alright, let's just water some of this down so we can get into the cracks and the crevices. Alright, and we got to get a small brush. Where's my small brush at? Don't recognize this song? Uh, which Katamari is this from? It's probably from 2. It's called The Royal Academy of Katamari. I think it's from We Love Katamari. Let me see. Oh, I just wrote Katamari on the f on the folder. But the song is called The Royal Academy of Katamari. <laughs> Mika, when you say shitty, that's that's the normal English weather. Yeah. So yeah, it's normal English weather over here. <laughs> Like, how many times per month do you get, like, nice, bright, sunny weather in, uh, in the UK? How often would you say? Because I always hear about that, how it's just, like, so, so foggy. It's always overcast. And then this track has a bit of a Star Wars thing going on, I think. <laughs> Let me... Let's do a little skip rooney What do we got? What do we got? There's one with, like, dogs barking, which is no good. It's just, like, dogs and cats barking and howling. I think it's funny, but I don't really want to listen to it for, like, three minutes. <laughs> okay, this is a good one. Mika, I have a Citadel one, but I use a bit of wood and blue tack. I find it better to do bases. Oh, as the Citadel one clamps onto the base. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. It clamps onto the base, so you won't really be able to paint the rim. You'd have to come up with some other solution to paint the rim. Hmm. They didn't think about that. I mean, what I'm doing for this, like, and for these models here that I've glued on... I uh, I just glue them onto this because I find that like sticky tack at some sometimes it drops right like sometimes the sticky tack is no longer sticky and I'm working on a model and then boop sometimes it just drops off maybe it's because of the weather sometimes here it gets like damp or humid or something so I just super glue them to it and this guy doesn't have a base but if it did I'd I'd be able to easily paint around the rim, no problemo. Mika, depending on the month, if it's summer, then yeah, it can be all right. But most of the months, it's four to five days a month. Four to five days a month of of nice weather. Hmm. That is, I don't know. That's a. I think that would wear down on me after a while. Like I live in Canada, so I mean, Canadian weather isn't that great either. We've got you know, just a few months of nice summery weather and then, and yeah, it's back to winter. <laughs> In fact, uh, last month was April. It's almost the end of April and it snowed. <laughs> and that's just one of those things where it could break you down. It could, uh, it could really wear down on your spirit if you, if you let it get to you, you know? Okay, so now we're going to kind of lighten up those noodles with this again we're gonna kind of mix some of this back into the into this brownish color that I have here and then we're gonna kind of get the highlights of the noodles but I also need it for painting the rim of the of the bowl again and I'm fairly new to using the uh, this line by the way this is the game color uh, Vallejo, fairly new to using it, but I think it's pretty good, actually. Okay, so let's get the rim here. And we probably have to paint it in several layers and make it really thin. Lately, I've been using some, um, 
some retardant to thin down the thin down the paint and and slow down the drying time. But I'm not using it this time. Maybe I should, but that's okay. <laughs> Doing it. Just using water to thin it down. It just means we have to do a few more layers. And I may have thinned it down a little too much. Mika, I've got a one inch block of wood and using a lathe I removed bits to make it smooth. Oh, f for like a handle? Like a painting handle thing? I think the next thing on the agenda as far as like the next project because we're, we're close to finishing up uh, my current uh, builds which is Ritsuka and the Exo Frame. We're practically done those. So the next project I'm going to do is painting some old hammer. I think we're going to get some paint thinner and strip strip some models, some acetone, or I'm going to try and find simple green. I hear that's a good solution to strip models. I don't know if I've asked you that, Mika, actually, um, but I've been asking around as far as like what people use to strip paint off of their models. Um, and I've, I've been hearing some different things. People use some different stuff. Um, but I want to get your thoughts if you have any kind of recommendation. What do you use? Because I'm, I have a mix of plastic models and uh, and metal models. So I'm just trying to find out what's, what's going to be a good solution to use. Or if anyone else has any recommendation. I'm all ears. Alright, so here comes the tricky part. I think we got to use a small brush. And we're going to get in there with this. And it's kind of too thin actually. But we'll try, we'll try, 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 try to get this stuff. Sorry, scratch the mic. I'm not going to try and paint every individual strand of noodle. But we're going to try and... And we're going to do a thin wash, I think. A really thin wash to kind of get some definition. And that'll be the... That'll be the noodles. And then we got to... Think about how we're going to make it look soupy. If I had some resin, some clear resin, that would do the trick, I guess. And actually, I've been thinking about buying some resin because I—that's one another project that I want to tr kind of try—is playing around with resin. Whew. And let's just go around, let that dry, and we'll work on the next noodles. I was thinking about making one soba noodles and making the other one like like egg based noodles but mm, I'm too lazy now let's just make them both the same kind of noodle and by the way you can watch youtube videos of this of this vending machine in operation it's kind of cool although to be honest there's this like the noodles don't have a lid on it when you get it out the machine and so it kind of rubs up against like the metal lid. Hmm, can I show? When you get your noodles, it kind of rubs up against like the interior hatch, this like interior door. If you imagine like a car garage gate or no garage door thing, the noodles kind of rub up against it. And I think that's kind of gross <laughs> when I was watching the videos. No, oh, this is the dog one. Okay, fine. Let's just listen to it because I'm too lazy to change it now. 
like a bunch of animals singing the Katamari song. I normally skip it. There was a pig. Listen to this. Listen to this. Oh, I heard a cowbell. I don't know what this is supposed to be. Oh, there's a monkey. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Bacon. The dogs. You got ducks. You got pigs. funny how they really go in with the with the theme or the motif of the of the katamari theme and they just they just continually revisit it and and spin it off into different variations and this is like the end game this is the end game of the katamari theme when they've explored every other option they've did slow versions they've did serenades they've did ballads they've done poppy versions what was left animals animals <laughs> it's so funny mary so many rage quitters it's hilarious if it's not rage quitting, it's lag. I'm telling you, you should uh, you should expose them. You should just like throw it up on the on YouTube. Just expose all these rage quitters. I mean, it's kind of satisfying to some extent, right? That you've gotten to the point where you're just you you've beat them down so much that they feel like their only op only option is to uh, to quit. But it does suck. Um, is there there isn't any way like are are they punished in some way for for rage quitting? Like do they take a loss or like is there something where if a user quits too many times like they'll be locked out of the game for 24 hours? I think I think some other games have that, don't they? I think some other games have something like that. Damn, in this song they're not playing like <laughs> It's long. Like, they legitimately turned this into a full song. <laughs> and like I said, I normally skip it, but I felt like... Let's just listen to the entirety. Let's just listen to the whole thing today. It's the elephant. Okay. Here's the progress thus far. Enhance focus. Yeah, I'm kind of picking out the details of the noodles. That's, it looks pretty good so far. I think we can we can push it and make it a little a little better. I think we can push it a little more. And I'm pretty sure there, there's this square, there's this flat square, and I'm pretty sure it's seaweed. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do some reference, I'll do some research as far as what that is. There it is. And this one, this one's got like a peanuts. Charlie Brown kind of thing going on. Very comfy.
bacon i don't think sf5 has any kind of punishment system if it does it's not that severe yeah man they should really i mean it's too late like the game is getting like it's it's feature complete now or rather it's just finished now so so yeah hopefully with the next game they'll they'll do something about it oh yeah did i finish my thought about the whole square enix thing they sold off all their their western developers like uh idos and crystal dynamics they sold it all off to the embracer group which I, if i'm not mistaken is a swedish a swedish uh holdings company that have like a bunch of uh that own a bunch of video game studios and small developers and stuff like that so yeah so now square enix they do they no longer own deus ex they no longer own um uh, uh, Tomb Raider, all of that stuff, and it was only like 300 million, which I think is kind of cheap. Like they sold it off for, I feel like they could have gotten a lot more. Like I'm not just thinking about those brands as a video game, but also as properties to turn into movies. Like, yeah, didn't they? I feel like they kind of sold them off for a little too cheap there. And so the developers that made um, that made the Avengers game, I don't know what the situation is now with that Avengers game. Like, is is development halted? What's going on? The Avengers um, free to play game? We were talking about free to play games earlier. So yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. Very odd. And and you know they recently the developers of of Deus Ex, they recently put out that Guardians game, which I hear is actually quite a good game. Like, surprisingly so. But it didn't really make much money, and I'm sure that Square Enix kind of factored that in. But it's very odd because it's like, what's going on at Square Enix? There was some people, there was some uh, in the writing that I had, I had seen uh, earlier today, there was some people speculating that they're selling off they're selling off some divisions like like that to prepare themselves for sale so that they can s they become a more attractive option for sale right because maybe Microsoft or Sony or whoever EA they wouldn't necessarily be be interested in purchasing um, they wouldn't be interested in purchasing Square Enix if they were saddled with the baggage of those other companies and they didn't they weren't too successful uh, not slide not worth the hassle to maintain the Western studios yeah I guess I guess so like it's, it's just very odd like I feel like they didn't really try to to put those studios in a position to really succeed for some reason it just I always regarded those Western studios as something other than the main Square Enix you know like, cause in my mind, when I think of Square Enix, I just think about, I think about the Japanese side, right? And yet they had all of these other properties, all this Western stuff going on, but it always felt like a very separate endeavor that was almost like an entirely different company. And, and now they've just sold them off. Okay, so now we gotta paint the interior of this thing. The inner bowl, the inner part of the bowl. And then we might just wrap things up, guys. There's still a lot more to do with this. We gotta paint the, the fish cake and the seaweed. And then I, I wanna fill this up with uh, with some clear coat or some gloss varnish and see if that doesn't give it kind of like a soupy look. <laughs> I'm hoping that'll be, that'll, be the end result. I'll do it on one bowl. And if it looks like crap, then we've only messed up one bowl. 
Bacon, a part of me wants SE to be bought by other publishers since their management seems kind of messy, but at the same time, I hate the idea of one or two publishers owning everything. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Like, ideally, they kind of just have a management shakeup. Because it's like, man, they've got... We should have had a new Nier game by now. Let's let's just put it that way. Or we should have heard of something like that. And it just feels like we're not going to be getting one. It's probably the one thing I'm most interested in from Square Enix, right? Is a new a new Nier or Nier Automata type game. So long as the right people are are still involved. And yet and yet we haven't heard anything about that unfortunately. And it's just like, whoa, it's such a missed opportunity. And instead, you've got Platinum Games. They got Platinum Games. Um, they hired them to make Babylon's Fall. <laughs> and isn't that funny, by the way? Like, Babylon, F Babylon's Fall tanks, right? I think there's, if you look it up on Twitch right now, there's probably less than 10 people playing it right now. It tanks so badly. And yet it's... It's the uh, American divisions or the Western divisions of Square Enix that are getting punished, right? I mean, their their games kind of flop too, but yeah, that's just a little something I noticed. It's not like the Japanese developed games have been amazingly successful. Mary, you have to start making a ban list? Oh my gosh, it's really that bad, eh? I'm telling you, you need to expose these people. Expose them. A list of rage quitters and lagging connections and a list of uh, Ryu players? <laughs> you should. Yeah, FF7's remake pr production value was just so long. And, and FF15, of course, and Versus how it was versus uh, of 13 even everything everything about square enix right and yet you know it's the western devs that are getting punished right they're getting like they're the ones who evidently are getting cut loose because evidently they did a poor job but it seems like across the board all of square enix should be sharing in the blame for how they've handled their company overall you know Very weird situation, and, and yeah, like I said, it's possible that they might be shedding off some weight so that they can get purchased, but I don't know. I think that that uh, uh, Embracer Group, I think it's called the Embracer Group, I think they walked away with a pretty good deal there, 300 mil for all of that. They have Tomb Raider now, like, you know, they're just one amazing Tomb Raider game away from becoming like a huge franchise again, and you know, time that with a really good movie as well. And then you've got a, you're, you'll easily make 300 mil, you know, in terms of like the overall uh, marketing and the the revenue from merchandise and stuff if they play their cards right. I think just Tomb Raider alone could easily make back that 300 mil, so long as it's handled well by people that actually care. You know, I think so. And then you've got everything else, right? You've got, they've got Deus Ex now, a huge franchise, which is, again, in a position to, to really knock it, knock the cyberpunk genre out the park. You know, they can, they could make the, the, the true cyberpunk game, right? Because the cyberpunk game that everyone got that thought was going to be amazing kind of shit the bed. I don't know, did Mojo even finish that game? I have no idea. So there's an opportunity there. Ryu equals permanent ban. Hate Ryu that much? Aw, oh, poor guy. Do you say uh, Ryu or Ryu? I kind of use, use both interchangeably. When I was uh, dating a Japanese girl like a long, long time ago, Another lifetime, practically. She said it like, like, Ryu, Ryu, something like that. I was like, hmm, I'm going to stick with Ryu. <laughs> Ryu.
and Seth Killian says it Ru, which I think is uh, equally off. It could be a little closer to to my 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 childhood days of saying Ryu, but Ru sounds pretty off. <laughs> dating, quote unquote dating. Yep, quote unquote dating. Just imaginary, just a pretend girlfriend. <laughs> Ryu, as in the Karate Man from Fortnite. What did they call? Uh, what did they call Ken or Terry Bogard? Like Red Red Ryu or something. <laughs> All right. Hmm. What are we doing for time? Ooh, three twenty-eight. Wow. I'm a little over my normal time. Red Ryu with the hat. Oh, uh, now you feel a little better. Mary Trunks, now that you crushed a, a Ru, I've been using all the different terms just now. Ru, Ryu. So the noodles here, let's take a look. Let's see if we can get a good look at this stuff. The noodles kind of got that soba noodle look, I think, a little bit. And we got to pick out all of the, the rest of the details. And the bowl itself, I don't think I'll do any shading to the bowl. don't think it's necessary. It's actually supposed to be a paper kind of cardboard bowl, maybe lined with wax on the interior. From what I've seen in the reference, it's, it's fairly flimsy, but I just painted it beige. Maybe what I'll do is I'll paint one to be intended to be kind of like a papery one. And another one I could maybe make more like, um, Maybe like a, a, a piece of porcelain kind of thing, so we can put a something shiny on the outside. But uh, yeah, the noodles are done, and actually there should be there should be chopsticks somewhere here. Where are they? Where are my chopsticks at? My chopsticks. Oh, sorry, hit the. Yeah, and I don't think these chopsticks are going to fit on the models. I don't think the chopsticks will fit on the model here. Fit on the on Ritsuka. They're supposed to be two. This is they're two chopsticks attached. It's so small. But we'll just put that down there. And Kazuya is another Shoto. Jeez. Well, that's Smash players for you. Okay, well, I think we did a decent amount of stuff today. We built some Retsuka. We did some shading on um, on Fumina. Did some shading on this guy right here, and we worked on some noodles. So all in all, a pretty decent day at the office. <laughs> and I'll probably work some more uh, into the evening. But I think that's going to do it for me, guys. So if you made it this far, I want to thank you all for